Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Back on theCUBE, we are live here in Las Vegas at uh, reInvent, AWS putting on a show for about 45,000 of its closest friends. You might hear some of the cheering behind us. It's, uh, it's happy hour here, a lot of happy <laughs> folks having a good time. John Wall is on with Justin Warren, and we're now joined by a couple of fellows from Daytrium. We have Cesalo Reddy, who is uh, the co-founder of Daytrium, and Ken Nunes, who is the VP of Marketing. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us here on theCUBE. We appreciate the time. Thanks for having us here. First off, let's talk about Daytrium. Um, for those uh, who are watching, might not be familiar uh, with your particular offering, if you would, Cesala, give us a little thumbnail of what you guys are doing. Yeah, so we're kind of a new breed of uh, unifying compute, primary storage, and backup all built into the same product so that it becomes convenient for every, for the end user to let, not have to manage multiple pieces of infrastructure. It's a unifying way of managing it. It's a, it's a, it's a, new, it's a new way of doing convergence. It's the next evolution of hyperconvergence. And now in this particular AWS event, we're here to announce that our backup extends beyond the data center to be, to be having it as a service running in Amazon. That's our new offering today as of this yeah. yeah, so a little, more, a little bit more about the announcement then. Um, because this was, this was uh, again, uh, why you're here, yeah. you know, in and, and terms of becoming, I guess, even more enjoined with, uh, with AWS, right. that offering. I mean, if you would, Ken, I mean, run through that a little bit and the prominence of that announcement, why you think this is a significant moment for you all. So we uh, have seen, first of all, a huge attraction with our customers to bring kind of the backup or data protection function into their sort of tier one environment. You know, one uh, individual can kind of do it all, manage it all. Uh, at the same time, we talk to a lot of folks who've uh, got an AWS strategy and they might even have some developers, you know, doing stuff with AWS, but they haven't, um, uh, broadly, they haven't been able to take full advantage of, you know, backup uh, DR in the cloud because when they do the math, you know, the, the numbers just haven't been there in terms of the economics of that. We felt like we could do something about that with some innovative technology that Cezala and his guys put together around uh, what we call global cloud deduplication. You might yeah. want to talk so a little bit about that. Before yeah. Datrim, I was the CTO of a company called Data Domain, you probably heard of it. So being there, what we, have, what we did there was being uh, the, one of the pioneers in doing a global dedupe, right? So we learned a few things there. And the other thing we learned about, about being in that company was that I learned that many people ignore backup. Backup seems to be like one of the, one of the you know, if you have a car, you don't think of the insurance, you pay for it. Right. But it's an important part. Your family jewels are there, you got to make it too. And uh, if you look at the backup administrators, their life is not very happy because everybody ignores them. But we didn't want to do that. We were, we were just talking about that in our last segment too, yeah, weren't we? About I, 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 it. I, 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 nobody I, wants to be the backup guy, right? Yeah. Nobody Actually, wants to be the backup guy. That problem. It's great until that yeah. one mistake. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we want to solve that problem very nicely, which is why we have converged backup into our product because it's not another thing just on the side. It is, an, it is your main family jewels. So that's what we've tried to do. So, but to make it really work well, you must have the fundamentals of storage. I know it's a little bit of a, like you know, the details, but details do matter in how you do this. So dedupe is a old thing, but still a lot of people don't have it. If you don't have dedupe and compression, all the other data reduction features, backup, you really can't do backup. And then how do you extend it beyond the data center, right? So if you're going to do like tape, you do folds and every week and incrementals. If you do the same thing to the cloud, you know the expense of S3, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. So it's not really practical anymore. What we wanted to do was bring two things to the cloud. One is that we know that AWS is expensive, and secondly, AWS is hard to use. It's like Lego, it's like Lego pieces, right? Yeah. If you're a developer, you can put it together, but if I want to just use it, consume it, how do you bring that to the market? So we did two things. One is that we extended the global dedupe all the way to the cloud, so everything ends up there, it's all globally deduped. We get like five to like 15x dedupe over there. If you have multiple sites going into, the, into our offering, the all gets dedupe, very convenient. Over the wire transfer is very, very convenient, very, very cheap. It's, it's, and also the other thing we have done is that we made it as a, as a SaaS offering. See, the world is moving towards a SaaS offering. So in the, next, in the near future, you'll see some of our new announcements, which I can't talk about it right now, it's still secret. But that's what the consumption model is going to be. It's a SaaS model 
there are developers who want Lego, great, for Amazon, but there's a lot of other people who want to run a business, not just build pieces. So for that, we want to build the SaaS, as a SaaS offerings. Convenient to use, it runs in the cloud, don't have to manage it, don't have to like run all these things in your, your data center. So this backup offering is our first entry, a backup as a service, it's very unique. It's all this global dedupe and it's a service, nothing to do, it's all, you don't have to upgrade it, you don't have to manage it, you just have to use it, consume it as a product. The other thing that uh, I was going to say is when we've introduced this to our customers, pretty much everyone has said, yeah, we have you know, a strategy to incorporate public cloud in what we're doing. But almost to an individual, none of them had done it yet. I mean, yeah. certain people in their company may have, may have accounts, but for a lot of these guys, it was their first ever engagement with AWS. And so for them, they, they understood our product. Uh, they just wanted that experience to just kind of extend yeah. to, to AWS and not have to figure out how much EC2, how much DynamoDB, how much yeah. you know, S3 bucket size, whatever. They didn't yeah. want any of that. Just you know, help me do what I need to do on your platform, leveraging uh, yeah. they wanna, public they wanna, cloud yeah, data so They want to run a business, not manage Lego pieces. I'm not sure how the watch works. Exactly. What time is yeah. it, right? Right. 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 Yeah. And we are very good at what we do. Right. Yeah. So you've, you've taken compute and storage, and you've convert, put all of that together, and you've added backup, and you're basically making it a one-stop shop for yep. people to do something. It's like, as you say, I want to tell the time, just give me a watch. You've added this remote sort of backup capability all in there. It's like, what's left for me to do? Do I just buy some of your stuff and say, and I'm done? It's actually, like, actually a lot else. of our customers, you know, they haven't talked to us for six months. We call them back, are you okay? They're like, nothing to do. I forgot about it because it just works and it runs. <laughs> That's what you get with us. But don't tell my boss. <laughs> yeah, sure. There is that. I mean, they, I think there are other things to do. But yeah. still, yeah. they have other pieces to them which don't work as well. Sure, sure. So they yeah. were managing those. Well, sure. And by the way, I mean, the the um, strategic stuff that's on their plate that they've never been able to get to in the past. Managing maybe they're managing LUNs on the storage side, or you know, dealing with backup stuff that would give them headaches. That is out, and they can focus on things that accelerate the business, drive revenue, top line, and you know, make IT a hero again, right? Yeah, I, making something simple and easy to use like that, that takes a lot of engineering and a lot of work. People underestimate how much work goes into making something easy to use. Now you've been working on this for a little while, and you've, you've changed, like people might be familiar with hyperconverged, but you guys are doing things in a slightly different way, and you, which is clearly a much better way of doing things. So could you maybe explain a little bit more about how that, that global DJ works in conjunction with the stuff that's on site, which makes it a really good fit to go and to expand out into the cloud? Sure. So firstly, we believe in the philosophy of not one click, but zero click. One click is too hard. Yep. You got to read the manual to know what the one click is. So that's where our design thinking has come from. Like, you know, if we can eliminate that clicks, that's even better. Right, why give the choice to the customer? Because it means that we have not thought about it, right? That's kind of what the design philosophy is of our company. For the first three years, we didn't ship a product because we spend the time to build the fundamentals of the product, right? You can't build this later on. Yeah. Like Global d it's hard to build later on. It's just, just not, it's not possible. So, so Global d is this concept that um, if something is there already, you, you can avoid sending it there. You negotiate from site A to site B or wherever it is. It's a multi-cloud world. Wherever it is, you can negotiate and say, do you have this? Yes and no. You don't have it, then we can send you the copy and keep it there. So you tend to have this, this massive reduction of data. But also remember, it's not just that global, global data is going to save you costs. Ultimately, backup is about recovery. Yeah. Right? You also need a sufficient amount of tools and, and uh, workflows to be able to recover what you want efficiently. And also, ultimately, backup is useful if you can recover it. If you don't check it, you're gonna if you ever have a problem at the time recovery, you're gonna lose your job. So we also do the other thing of, okay, we saved your cost, but also we check it regularly to make sure that the backup data is recoverable when you need to recover it. That, that's, that, that's also an important aspect of it. So when global data is like blockchain. Think of it like blockchain. So how do you know, like say, for example, if you have a piece of data here, you send it somewhere else, how do you know that it all went there? Somebody said so, but how do you verify that? In a fundamentally as an architecture. So our global data loop is like blockchain a little bit. Like we, can, we know that when you send all these pieces over there, we can verify at the high level, yes, this is the, this is the, the signature of the data. It, it's all there and say, okay, we're we good. So now you can send the data anywhere you want. 
and you can be sure that the data you send is what you're supposed to send. Okay. And Justin, you mentioned kind of the uh, difference between what we're doing and hyper-converged. Yeah. And if you, um, you know, think of hyper-converged, it, it has brought, you know, compute, storage, network, all in the box. Um, our approach is different. It's more like kind of a, the, the modern hyperscalers in that we split yeah. sort of that compute and active data from durable capacity. I like, um, I like to think of it as taking all the great advantages that you got from hyperconverged, but then getting rid of some of the limitations yeah. where right. it's like, we can yeah. scale compute and storage independently of yeah. each other, but yeah. we still get all the great ben benefits yeah. you get from an integrated platform. And, right. and the, the interesting kind of proof point is when we did the uh, cloud native port, uh, not a code, not a lick of code was changed in the underlying file system that yeah. users don't ever see. But um, that just kind of shows you that kind of approach works in a world that's got to embrace public cloud as part of your IT strategy. Yeah. Well, before we uh, uh, say goodbye, I just want to get your take on the show in general. Um, knowing that you, you both probably have some history with what AWS has been up to in the past, but this is not the same as in the past. At least I don't, that's the, what we're hearing from people. What's your take on what you're seeing here, what you're feeling here? Fair enough. So I'm a science and a computer science kind of guy, so I kind of enjoy the show because it's all familiar stuff from a little bit. So what they've done is an amazing job. It's an amazing business, to be honest, how they built all these pieces. And uh, they've executed pretty well. Their service model is pretty good. I mean, sometimes things don't work as well, the pieces but they're willing to spend the time to work with you, which to me is pretty awesome, right? They're, they're willing to have the, uh, the service level agreement to like, you know, they call you and they're willing to forgive you. I mean, they're willing to do all these things for you, which is why people like Amazon, because of the service model. So they have a lot of building blocks. So I'm talking to people, I'm going to some of the sessions. What I found is that there are two kinds of, like, there are two kinds of people. There is, the, there is the developers, they love some of the things here because it's a like building block, I mean, like Lego. Who doesn't want to you build love your Lego? Legos, it's awesome, don't you? right? Yeah, but you I think, love but I think, yeah, right. but I think, for a lot of companies don't have the time, luxury to spend time with this. They want a simpler, higher level constructs. So SaaS applications, for example, you can build it in Amazon. So the SaaS people who are building the product can build it using Lego pieces. But the higher level I, businesses want to use SaaS model. They want to use simplest, more simpler model. So that's the difference between I see between VMware and uh, Amazon, I think there's a lot of developers here. In, Am in, in, in VMware, it was mostly, I think, the IT folks were there because it's about operating the business, right? So I think it's interesting to see as the future goes, where is that shift? Like, you know, is everybody going to be a developer? I don't think so. It's very right, complicated. Right. Yeah. Have you guys used them with the Amazon APIs? They're actually not trivial. You have to think about what happens if it fails, what happens if this dies. I mean, you have to think about all these things. It's a pretty complicated model. It's a good formula, though, and it's working for them, yeah, obviously. Totally. It's all... The, the show here, like we just had what, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Like you look around here, this is like AWS Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, it's, <laughs> everyone is here. Everyone is kind of, you know, shopping the new tech that's, you know, integrated with, uh, with their favorite public cloud. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a huge mixer of, uh, of you know, technology and uh, uh, AWS after all is, uh, well, they probably learn a lot from the, uh, the uh, e-commerce side, the, the uh, storefront, and they have kind of worked that into their, um, their show and their partnership, bringing in companies like Datrium to really uh, uh, leverage their, their right. infrastructure as a service. It's awesome, it's great for us. It, well, it's been a great show, and thank, we appreciate the time here. Yep. Uh, good luck with the Legos. Thank you. <laughs> I know, no, no. all right. <laughs> <laughs> Back with more live. We are in Las Vegas. We'll continue and almost, uh, almost uh, come down the home stretch of our live coverage here on theCUBE. Back with a little bit more in just a moment. <laughs>